Okay, um, shall we begin? You all can hear me just fine in the back? All right. Okay, uh, my name is Assistant Professor Paul. Uh, what you can call me, you can call me Prof. Paul. Don't call me Victor, that's my middle name, it's my grandfather's name. Uh, you can call me Prof. Patinadan as well. Uh, I'm currently one of the faculty here in uh, School of Social Sciences in Psychology. So what I do personally, my research work is a lot, I deal a lot with health psychology. Uh, I work in chronic health terminal illness, uh, meaning people who are about to die, right? So I do a lot of end of life stuff, right? You wouldn't think about it, right? You wouldn't think when you're looking at me. Uh, I do a lot of work with uh, end of life, people who are grieving, people who have lost a loved one. So very fun, happy stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm very good with silences. So I'm very good with awkward silences because that's my jam, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so I also do qualitative research. So for those of you who are very afraid of statistics, you'll be very glad to know that there's qual research. That's a different type of research method. It's where you sit down and talk to people or you observe them. So a lot of fun stuff like that. Uh, what else do you need to know about me? Um, I used to... Okay, I'll tell you a bit about my career progression also, just to give you an idea of how I got to where I am today. Um, after I graduated, from, I was from James Cook University. So some of you might have thought that, oh, I will end up in James Cook. Uh, well, I'm glad to see that you're here. Because James Cook at that time was like a cohort of like 20 people. <laughs> so everyone knew each other, and everyone knew the dirt on each other. So it's hilarious. Um, yeah, so I graduated from James Cook. Uh, I started working here in NTU. I was a research assistant. I worked in health psychology, um, and particularly in Wee Wee School of Communications. So I was there for about three to four years. I moved over. I didn't move over. Someone poached me. right? So uh, I got poached to LKC Medicine, which is still here, lah, still within the NTU ecosystem. And then eventually, uh, my supervisor at that time offered me a... Offered me a... Oops, wrong room. <laughs> my supervisor at the time offered me... He said, hey, very difficult to find uh, good help. Uh. You want to do your PhD or not? And I was like, huh? Ask like that. Uh. Then he's like, yeah, yeah, you're Singaporean, right? I know Singaporeans like, like free things. So I give you a free PhD, uh, scholarship. So that's what I did. Uh. So I ended up doing my PhD right here in NTU. Um, and then I left for a while, for about a year and a half. I was in Tan Tok Seng Hospital, where I was a, research, a senior research analyst. So I worked with doctors, nurses, medical social workers, and it was a lot of fun, because I get to tell them what to do. Right? So how often do you get to tell a medical doctor what to do? Right? When, when do they listen to you? Never. So I had a lot of authority, a lot of power, so I really enjoyed that. And then eventually, my, uh, my supervisor, head of the program, Prof. Andy, said, that, hey, there's like a position open. You want to apply or not? Throw your hand in the ring. Come back into academia. Then I think, Alamak, NHG got four bonuses a year, you know? Four bonuses a year. Then I'm thinking, oh my god, the wallet so fat. Now, to come back, I have to deal with students. Huh? Should I do that? Uh, but I love you guys, uh, so that's why I came back. All right? Yeah, so that's my career progression, right? And how I became a uh, professor uh, or an academic, right? Okay, so enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about you and about your enrollment into the psychology program. So congratulations. You probably made the most fun, wisest decision of your life, choosing to be here, right? All right, you know, and, <laughs> and not going to like econs or business. Uh, <laughs> Uh, psychology is a lot of fun, right? I think we are probably the most uh, fun group in Triple S, right? So what really is psychology? It's basically the study of human behavior, right? Uh, from a very empirical, scientific way of thinking. So not just that, oh, I just look at you and then I can tell what you're like. Every time I talk to taxi drivers, right, and I tell them, uncle, I do psychology, they say, oh, don't read my mind, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if I had a dollar for that, right, I'd probably be, I wouldn't need a job really, man. I can just do that, right? So psychology is very interesting because it intersects with a lot of different areas. Anthropology, which is the study of culture, right? Biology, medicine, neuroscience, philosophy, sociology. So all of these places sort of confluence within psychology. So that's something that is really, really interesting and something that you'll get to see as you progress over the next four years here, lah, right? So one thing good about psychology in triple S is that it does offer very scientific and practical training. So you'll be doing things like research methods, research design, uh, stuff like that, which uh, it's a nicer way of saying statistics. Lah. 
right? So how many of you are from Poly? Can I check? Did Poly site? Okay, quite a number. Rest from JC, IB program, right? So you all have no idea what's in store for you, <laughs> right? So the, <laughs> so the Poly kids, you all, you all know, lah, huh? you all know that statistics is not the most fun. But don't worry, we have an excellent statistician here. Uh, one of the best in uh, Singapore, JB Samsei Batam. Uh, one of the best in Southeast Asia. La. So people fly down and see him for like half an hour. Right? Um, and uh, you'll be in good hands with regards to statistics. So stats is one of those things that you need a very key skill. It's, it's a very key skill for psychology graduates. And a lot of times when you find a job, they'll ask you, oh, what kind of statistical software do you know how to use? What do you need to, what do you understand about it? And how many of you are bad in math? Okay, yes, don't worry, it's, this is a safe space, right? So um, I didn't even go for my JC math paper. La. So that's how bad at math I am. And I ended up becoming a psychologist. So uh, it's not the end of the world. It's not a mathematical thing. So stats is something that's very logic-based, right? <coughs> so if you do things like, if you understand a rule-based computing, oh, if A is equal to B, then you understand. La. So stats is not that hard. La. So people will tell you, right, your seniors will tell you, oh my god. Be prepared. Ah, don't listen to them. Right? Okay? Listen to me. <laughs> Alright? So, other than that, um, the psychology program here uh, does introduce you to the professional practice of psychology. So, we've been moving to make our curriculum very applicable. Right? Uh, and have very applicable skills. So, what is it that you need out there um, in the wild? Right? When you're going out and trying to find a job or like when you're working. What are the practical skill sets that you need? What do you need to be able to understand? How can you smoke your way through any situation right? uh, in, in, in your job? Lah. Don't do it here. Right? So all of these kinds of skills you will learn over the next few years. Lah, right? And one of those things about, about the, 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 the Triple S Psychology Program is that it does also prepare you to continue your education. Right? So how many of you are interested in doing masters? PhD? How many of you want to... Okay, this is very interesting. How many of you want to be clinical psychologists? Means you want to do like psychotherapy, you want to work with oh, people, I'm, I'm so depressed, I have anxiety, all these issues. People have issues, problem child, how many of you want to work with that? Right? Okay, yeah, quite a number, okay, that's, 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 that's very good. Uh, how many of you want to be in research? Researcher, right? How many of you like all the bio neuroscience stuff? Okay, quite a number also, yeah, those are the fancy ones. How many of you want to work with convicts, prisoners? Yes, very cool. And we have a wonderful faculty member, Prof. Olivia Choi, who does that. Yeah, so how many of you have no idea what to do? Still, I'm here, but I'm a bit confused. I'm uh, not too sure. Okay, yeah, you're my favorite group, okay? So, because it's fine, right? So, treat your psychology degree like a buffet, okay? Because you'll learn many different types. And you'll learn about fields that you haven't really considered as well. Things like organizational psychology, what is that, right? HR stuff. Right, industrial organizational stuff. And you also think learn about things like you know environmental psychology, conservation, evolution, all these kind of things that you might not really associate immediately with the study of psychology. Lah, right? So we'll go through some of the courses later. Uh, but yes, so all the practical skill sets that you learn here do prepare you to study further. Right? Uh, to do your masters, either by research or by coursework, or to do your PhD, or to do your PsyD, which is your doctor in psychology. Right? So um, if you're interested in that career pathway and you want to chat a bit more, uh, we can do this after that, lah. so after, after this presentation. So um, it's quite complicated because Singapore only offers, only a few places offer a clinical uh, applied master's or clinical applied psychology PhD program. So you want to know where to go after that. So some planning is uh, important. Lah, right? So either a uh, psychologist or behavioral researcher like myself. So what about us? What about NTU psychology? Right? So why are we better than um, the people over there at N? Starts with an N, ends with a US. <laughs> so we are fairly young. Uh, we started in uh, 2005. Um, okay, that's fairly young for me, because I'm ancient. Um, but, but okay, la, your, your psych department, generally, everyone's quite cool and hip and young. So we have about 20 full-time core faculty. So these are all your assistant professors, your associate professors, and your full professors, right? And we also have a whole bunch of like international scholars and active researchers. And our professors are these people as well. So they have international collaborations, they do international research. They are, sorry, there's just something very weird over here. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and they're actively, they're, they're active researchers. La. So they have like all these global kind of connections and very cool, 
you might be able, you might find yourself working in some of these projects as well. So all, if not most of us, are trained at the world's leading university, right? Um, so places like uh, your big three, like Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, uh, we have uh, faculty trained there. So uh, we have faculty who've been there. I mean, not go there to take picture. I mean, they're they've literally trained in places like this. Yeah, so some of our faculty over here. Thank you guys for attending my TED Talk. Hi. <laughs> so literally, there's a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the best one we could find. And I'm not even in the front, right? OK. So uh, yeah, so many of us, <laughs> many of us are trained at one of the world's, like, at the world's leading university, like, such as myself, which is NTU, right? So I was born and bred here. Uh, we also have adjunct faculty members, people from industry, as well as uh, honorary joint appointment members. So Fred Long, who started the Singapore Psychological Society, is one of our um, adjunct uh, lecturers as well. So very interesting stuff. OK, so a bit more about you guys. Um, so across all levels, we normally see around 400 people. So quite a big cohort right, across the four years. And uh, for those people with minors, there's about 100 students every year who choose to pick this up. Right, and we also have uh, how many of you are doing double degree? Like, we not not to, not today. Oh, okay, okay. So none of you yet, right? Some of you might change your mind. Okay, and yeah, so we are a really fun bunch. And even you see the Ben and Jerry's cow is our friend. So that's a lot of fun, right? The psychology, um, the vibe here is pretty lit, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, some of the the work that we do here, some of the research labs that our wonderful faculty have. So we study everything across the gamut of human behavior and emotions, right? So everything from brain and neuroscience, culture, society, uh, cognition, ways of thinking, health, and uh, a lot of work uh, with regards to health, health psychology, so I'm part of ARCH as well. Um, career aspirations, face and motion, uh, assessments, motive assessments, personality psychology, right? tech and social behavior, uh, children, who here wants to work with young kids, young children, developmental, yeah, that's usually very popular. <laughs> wants to work, Susie. <laughs> right, so things like that. And we have like very uh, internationally renowned labs, right? And uh, wonderful faculty who actually sort of run this. And also things like, you know, the more Hardcore neuroscience stuff, right? MRI machines, right? All those fancy, uh, big, expensive toys. You get to play with that as well. And our Prof. Olivia hates her crime and antisocial personality behavior, antisocial uh, behavior lab as well. So why is there a space here? That's probably me, la. You know, eventually I want to <laughs> get my name there and start my own lab. Uh, but I'll be dealing with grief, obviously. So I've already thought of the name for the lab, which is the Grief Research and Compassionate Education Lab. Grace, nice, huh? Yeah. Thought about it, but I got no money to fund it, so that they'll they'll come in soon, right? Okay. So requirements. What do you need to succeed over here? For those of you who are single majors, uh, you need 27 core AUs, academic units, right? So this will really take up a majority of your time, and then you have the ICC stuff, right? So ICC is your interdisciplinary collaborative core. Correct, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's the, these are all like stuff that you have to do, and we'll go through a bit about that. There's also the BDE stuff. So this is uh, all those extra electives as well. So for psychology single major, you need 128 AUs to graduate. And for those of you who are interested or who are doing double majors, that will be 138, right? So if you get confused about this, uh, I'll tell you who to talk to at the end of this, right? Okay, so what do we need to do? So your Core psychology subjects are all of this fun stuff over here, right? Intro to psych, this is like your basic, across the board, what is psychology about, right? <coughs> Fundamentals of social science research, how to conduct research, how to think about research methods, uh, quantitative research methods, how to design a study, right? Some of the stats falls into here as well, right? Research design data, uh, data, analyst, uh, data analysis as well. Developmental psychology, so psychology across the lifespan from Young kids, adolescents, moving on to older uh, individuals in life. Social psychology, the bio stuff, personality and individual differences, which I'll be taking next sem, this sem actually. And also like cognitive and abnormal psychology. So for those of you who are interested in doing clinical work, right, this will be very interesting for you, right? Abnormal psychology. That's where you're dealing with the disorders and stuff like that. 
So then once you've done all this, all of your basic stuff, you can start mixing around your HP tree, your level tree stuff. So this gets a little bit more uh, interesting, gets a little bit more specialized, right? Um, and eventually you want to do at least level, like four level four courses. So these are really your specialist courses, right? And finally, you take your graduation project, uh, your GP or your FYP, right, in your final year. And this will span across your last two semesters, your graduation project, right? Um, so those of you who, um, you know, who don't really make it to the, to the CGPA needed for FYP, uh, you'll be asked to do two additional 4,000 uh, subjects, right? So let's talk about some level three courses. So remember when I said that you should be treating this kind of like a buffet. Your level three courses is like, okay, you kind of like some dishes at the buffet. You're going back for a second round, right? So or you see something very interesting uh, at the buffet table. So this is what you can go and select. So everything from positive psychology, the science and art of happiness, psychology of everyday design. So things like ergonomics, that's really like a, a combination of psychology and engineering as well. So applied stats, evolutionary psychology, uh, primate behavior, Abe's Guide to Human Language. So that's very, very interesting as well. Uh, animal behavior, general psychology. How many of you want to work with old people? Right? <laughs> no one. <laughs> okay, y'all will change. Okay, some of you will be like, okay, you know what? I kind of really like old people. They're very sweet. All right, fun to work with, easy to work with. All right, generally. Right, until they get a little bit um, confused, then it's a problem, right? So things like social cognition, human memory, memory systems, how memory works, uh, child psychopathology, biopsychology, criminology, personnel psychology, testing, all of these, like remember I mentioned the more applicable stuff? This is where it comes in as well. Occupational health as well as cultural psychology. So really the breadth of human experience, human emotions, human feelings, thoughts, behaviors, right? And then you move to the, oh, wow, okay. Your level 4,000 courses. So in your buffet, your, lev your level twos, level ones, those are your mains, right? Yeah, you go and take, right? And then your level 3,000, you kind of see some new things that you enjoy. Your level 4,000 is you're going back, right? This is like your specialization. And uh, you kind of take things that you're really, really interested in, um, that you really want to sort of get the most amount, the most bang for your buck, right? with regards to the education that you're getting here. So everything from... Can you remember what I said about silence and me having a very good relationship? Okay, so you can take everything from, you know, lab, so lab, these are all the advanced courses, lab in social psychology, uh, personality, individual differences, trauma, correctional, mental health in the community, IO, qualitative methods as well. So all of these advanced topics, right? So you might not know which ones you want to do yet, or you might have a general idea of what you find instantly interesting, but uh, give it some time, right? Take the modules, especially your intro modules, that will introduce you to a lot of different areas of psychology, right? So these are some of the things that you can actually sort of um, go into as well. So yeah, so a lot of very, very interesting stuff. Cognitive neuroplasticity, multi-sensory integration, that's really all the, the biopsychology, how the physiology of the human body also affects our brains and how we, and, and eventually our behavior as well, right? So all of these kinds of stuff, right? Your IO psychology and all this, right? Also Last Dance, which is uh, the only deaf module that we have in uh, Singapore at an advanced level in, yes, yes, we do, and the, uh, the other end doesn't have, N, <coughs> doesn't have a tenatology module, right? So yeah, so we are quite special in that sense. You are very special in that sense, right? So your common core, your ICC, this has uh, been recently integrated by the school and it's a whole bunch of very interesting stuff. So this cuts across different disciplines. You're not just looking at psych, right? Because you want you to be very well-rounded individuals. So you learn a bit of philosophy, a bit of sociology, um, you know, a bit of like language stuff, how to effectively write a paper, how to effect effectively present. So very, um, again, very applicable, very translational work that you'll be doing over here. So things like sustainability, that's like a watchword, right? You know, if you turn on the news, you hear the word sustainability at least like 15 times in half an hour, right? Sustainability, 
right? So, and we want you to be healthy, not just like mentally, right? Also physically. So healthy living and well-being is one of the courses um, that you have to pick up as well. So very interesting stuff and you get to sort of do like quite a number of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of areas of uh, study over here. Ooh, talk a lot. Okay. So then you have your broadening and deepening electives. So these are electives that are offered, any subjects offered by any school, as long as you meet the prerequisites. And some interesting ones, so I had a chat with a couple of your seniors. Uh, some, interesting one, some interesting ones are things like fashion design. That's quite popular. Astronomy. Right? Astronomy. So that's studying the stars and planets, not like, oh my god, I'm a Pisces. No. That's astro that's a different thing. Right? That's like astrology, right? So astronomy is very popular, uh, pottery, right? You have things like that. Archaeology, uh, creative writing. For those of you who like drama, you can take courses for NIE as well. Drama courses for NIE from Vision of Performing Arts. So quite a number, right? So everyone's like, oh my god, really excited right now, yeah. So you can take quite a number of these kind of courses across the school and really use this to follow your passion, right? And go and find things like, yeah, that you would normally not do. I know that there's uh, ADM, Art Design and Media, offers like batik printing as well as a course. So really, if you're, you're getting a bit of psychological theory for a while, you can go and do some of these fun courses, right? Okay, so how can you plan your, 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 your next four years? So this is an example of what this can look like, right? So like Walid said just now, planning is incredibly important and you want to be able to plan properly so that you don't end up in a course at your final year and you're like, what am I doing here? Right? I think sometimes we see students who are like grizzled veterans, right, doing a very basic course and then you're like, ah, didn't plan properly, right? So it can look something like this. So in your first few SEMs, you want to do all the foundational courses and then slowly work your way up. So you're slowly clearing your ICC courses as well as your psychology core, and then you're starting to take your, your electives as well, right? And then for your year two, pretty much the same. So year two is where you might want to introduce a couple of 3,000 modules, right? The slightly more uh, advanced modules. And you might want to plan a summer internship for 10 weeks, right, at the end of your year two. So 10 week internship, you'll be working on a cool project Recently, I think uh, I had an intern from, who was working in SPF, so Singapore Police, right, the police forces, and they had a fantastic internship uh, with them, right, learned a lot. So by the time you come back to year three, it's really focusing on the level four modules. So the level four ones, um, some of them aren't examinable, so no exams at the end. So it's just group work projects, uh, assignments. So. You, the workload might or might not be as difficult as the first couple of years. And then finally, a year four, you want to take up your graduate project, right? your FYP, in your last two SEMs. Um, and you'll be working closely with a supervisor for that. And eventually, once you're done with that, then you can start planning for your convocation. And then I'll read out your names, and then you can collect your little thingy and smile like a property agent and take a picture. And that's very fun. And that's the end of your of your four years over here, right? So in one little table. Uh, this is just how it can look like. So depending on your life situation, depending on courses offered, uh, depending on some of the stuff that you want to do, all of this can change, right? So if you need any help with this, please approach our undergraduate office, uh, Yan Chia, uh, uh, Ms. Ng Yang Chia. So she's fantastic. She'll help you out with uh, any of this with regards to some of the concerns that you might have. So uh, do I need to go through the... Biological sciences or just no need, ah? Okay, all right. Okay, so um, this is with regards to second major. So if you're interested in doing a second major or minoring in something else, <laughs> you can scan these QR codes for more information. So again, really think about where you see yourself in the future, what you see yourself doing, what kind of work you want to do uh, with your psychology degree, right? And see whether or not it makes sense. So I know some people who who picked up the, the, the second major and then uh, halfway through it, they're like, oh, I kind of don't want to do this anymore. And then some of them were like, oh no, I should have done this earlier. So really think very carefully about what is it that you might want to be doing, right? 
Okay, so some top tips are plan ahead. So you've seen the word plan quite a lot today. And really plan ahead. So at least one to two semesters ahead. And uh, figure out which courses are being offered when, so that you get to do the, the electives that you want to do, you get to do the courses that you want to do. right? And if you are going to be doing your internship, which is compulsory, when you might want to do that. And if you want to go for exchange, you have some AUs to spare, when do you want to go for exchange? Right? So all of these things are very important things to think about. Uh, and they can be quite confusing, so it's useful to really uh, talk to people who know what's going on. Again, uh, Yanjia, your student ambassadors, uh, all these people can help you out. Right? Okay, um, and then yeah, so try and clear your core modules first lah, before moving on to the electives. So like I said, sometimes people don't clear the core modules and then um, they end up doing it very late in their career and then they're, they're sort of like, they just get very dejected and burnt out at the time, right? Because its core modules have a bit of uh, weight to them, right? It's a, they're a bit more theoretical because we really want you to get the foundations of stuff, right? So be consistent. So try and read at least three psych subjects in a, in, in a semester and clear your, your electives. Uh, try not to keep them outstanding, right? So make sure your electives, as they come in, you're clearing your electives. Um, yeah. And really, I mean, you might be very excited to do the, the more advanced stuff, right? The, the, the 4,000 level modules. Uh, but try and keep those only to year three, lah, right? Because that will really give you the foundation. You know what you're doing. You know how to handle yourself. Uh, you know how to handle the material. You're able to organize your time. Time management is very important in university, right? And by the time you're in year three, you should be a, an expert in all of that, right? So you might want to keep the 4,000 modules to those. So try and register for at least five or six courses every sem to finish your degree in a timely fashion, right? Um, I don't think we see very many hiccups. Uh, only in, if you really don't plan properly, right? Then it might become an issue. So again, plan, 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 plan ahead. Ken? All right. So Eureka, um, for some of you who are really very good at what you do and you're very interested in research, you're very interested in working with... Uh, um, research that's happening on the ground in the field and there are a couple of professors works uh, that you really want to be a part of uh, perhaps their lab or some of the projects that they're running uh, you can apply for Eureka as well so Eureka is very interesting uh, you do independent research under the supervision of a uh, faculty member over 11 month pre period so really what it feels like to be a scholar and an academic you get that hands-on kind of uh, um, <coughs> experience right there right and really, uh, Eureka is by invitation only, All right? So that's uh, very exclusive, and you get to brag about it that you're in Eureka project, right? So it's better than uh, it's better than a platinum membership at a club, lah, right? Eureka, at least to a nerd like me, right? And uh, yeah, so when you graduate with Eureka, you get NTU President Research Scholar. That's your title. Wow, you get a free title as well. And that's great, and they'll read this out during your convocation as well, right? Yeah. So you are required in the Eureka program to take at least 160 hours worth of research over a lemon month period. This sounds like a lot. Trust me, it's not, right? At the end of the Eureka project, we might, oh my god, <laughs> there's still so much to do, right? And uh, I think it's also possible to make your Eureka your FYP project, to extend it into your FYP project. So if there's stuff they really want to do and there's like, you know, uh, people who, uh, labs and projects they're really, really interested in, um, try and get into the Eureka project, right? And it'll look really good on your CV as well. Especially if you're going into research and you want to be a research assistant or research associate next time, uh, fantastic line in your CV. Okay, so overseas exchange. Uh, if you're very interested in the GEM program, right, uh, you can go to your little website over here. And you can take courses, so some of the AUs are transferable, depending on where you go and what you do. Uh, but they must be matched to specific courses in NTU. Right? So you don't have to worry about this now, but if you are thinking of doing exchange, which is actually really fun, lah, right? um, you might want to be thinking about where you want to go and how you, these AUs can transfer. I think one of the best people to talk to you about this are your seniors, those who've been for exchange or who are planning to go for exchange. Right. So your student ambassadors, right, go and talk to them. Right. They will help you out and they, you, you can know a little bit more about this. So people in, I think people have been to like Taiwan, Hong Kong, Germany, all sorts of places for exchange. So really very, very cute. Uh, very, very cool. Right. So again, you can transfer 
a minimum, you can transfer up to a maximum of 20 AUs from an exchange, uh, but only a maximum of three courses that you have to do, right? So again, don't worry too much about this now, but when the time comes and you're thinking about exchange, then go and find out, right? Because nobody's really going to hold your hand. If you just let it lapse, right, you, people just be like, okay, yeah. So you just, you just let it lapse. Lah. No one's going to be like, oh my God, have you done this? Have you done that? So that independence that you learn in adulthood, like what Wally was saying, uh, all that starts now. And it kind of sucks, right? But that's why it's like growing up. Oh well. And you'll be doing internships. So internships are compulsory, and you have two options. One is the 10 minute, uh, 10 minute. Wow, just go in your dad. Okay. <laughs> So, thank you. Okay, thank you for. You have a 10 week internship. You probably spend more than 10 minutes. Um, and this, this one is worth five AUs. So, you'll be comp completing one compulsory internship in one of these windows, lah, right? Either at the end of year two or at the end of year three. So, um, this is the shorter one. And some of you might feel that, hey, 10 weeks is a bit too short and you want a longer internship opportunity. There's also the 24 weeks one, right? the professional internship. So the 10-week one, we call it a professional attachment. The 24-week one is a professional internship. And people who choose this, right, um, you have to do this only in year three? Yes, so either SEM1, SEM2, because you're taking the entire semester for this internship, right? So, yes, so, yes, so when you're later on in the course, uh, and you want, you, if you want to chat about this a little bit more, please feel free to approach me as well. Uh, I'm also the internship coordinator for the course. Okay, so your FYP. Okay, so your FYP is really a prerequisite for your honours. Um, how, many of you, how many of you are familiar with the honours grading system? You all have heard of honours? You have no idea what honours is? <laughs> okay, so honours is this thing that they attach to your degree, right? Uh, whether or not you graduate with a certain level of honours. So obviously you want the highest one, right? Highest distinction. That's the best, right? And that means a lot because in a CV, when people are hiring you and they see what well, honours highest, highest distinction, that makes an impact, actually. It really does, especially if you're looking for postgraduate opportunities. Um, if you're thinking of scholarships, a lot of scholarships require you to have a high honours grading. So at least high distinction, highest distinction, whatever, right? So this is important. Right? And it, it is dependent on your CGPA, right? Uh, by the end of your third year. So your CGPA is over four. Right? So 3.9 or above, uh, your FYP will be mandatory. You have to do it, right? Forcing you to do it, do your FYP. Uh, but it is a very important learning experience, right? Especially because you get to learn about research and conduct research. And you might even get published as well, right? You might have your first paper out um, after your FYP. And then you can go and sh print it out and show everybody and be like, oh, look at me, I'm a nerd, right? <laughs> Well, that's a lot of fun. And, and I tell you, that, that adds a lot eventually when you're trying to look for a job later. All right? uh, if you're at 3.75 to 3.89, you can opt in to do your FYP, but it's not required. Um, if you ask me, you should, right? honestly. Um, and if you don't score that well, don't worry, it's not the end of the road. Um, you just have to do the, the two HP, uh, the, the, the two um, 4,000 level courses um, during those semesters. right? It's fine. Um, not everybody gets to do the FYP. That's okay. And I'll tell you that it honestly, in the long run, if you play your cards well and you play to your strengths, this doesn't really matter, right? I mean, like it does matter now. Like it makes things easier, right? But sometimes we just have to take the scenic route to get to places, right? So uh, I do have, uh, I do know people who graduated with a past degree who are now doing their PhDs. So they've been in the field for some time. They've done work in. Uh, for, it's been in the field for a long time, and then they've done their masters and all of this sort of stuff. So it's possible for you to reach uh, that level of postgraduate study even without stuff like this. But trust me, this makes it much, 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 much easier, right? Emphasis on the much, right? So then you have a couple of um, options as well, right? You know, so you can you be basically be working with uh, one of us, one of the faculty, as your uh, active research uh, active researcher and supervisor. Right? And you'll be doing an experimental survey or qualitative project. So this is your dissertation. So there are two types of dissertation. The first is this one, right? running a study, coming up with uh, scale measures or like, you know, uh, running an experiment, so that kind of stuff uh, through different research methods, either quantitative or qualitative. 
right? So that's the first option for the dissertation. The second option is the long format literature review or systematic review. So this one is usually in a group, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's in a group setting, so it'll be paired together with a couple of people. And you do a systematic review. What is a systematic review? You will learn it in HP 1100. <laughs> Eventually, it's basically taking a lot of stuff and condensing it into a very neat little paper, right? It's not as simple as that, but it is a very important research uh, method, right? So uh, our undergraduates have also been awarded grants to support their graduate project. So you can get money from outside uh, to run a project, just like what it what faculty does all the time, you know, we apply for proposals, we get a little bit of money and we are, we are running projects and uh, adding to academia and literature. And similarly, you can do that um, at this stage as well. So these are some of the people who have uh, granted our, our students some cash, right, some money to run their project. Uh, National Council of Problem Gambling, Family Research Fund, Home Team, right, the, their, BH, their, their BSU, Behavioral Science Unit, as well as Singapore Children's Society and Family Research. So all of these kinds of places, right? Um, possible for you to achieve a lot within this area. So try your very best, uh, plan ahead, and uh, work hard, right? Okay, <laughs> okay, academic integrity policy. I think um, multiple people have told you many things about this already, um, so I won't take too much time with this. Just don't do it, right? <laughs> Just, just don't, okay? If you're thinking of doing this, just stop, okay? Just don't do it. Don't ask people to write your stuff for you. Don't plagiarize, right? Don't commit academic fraud. I mean, you work so hard to get here, the last thing you want to do is to get kicked out of school, right? So don't do that, right? Just no, okay? Say no, right? If your friends are like, hey, man, let's go and like pay someone for a research project or something, just tell them no, okay? Right? So. Try not to be academically dishonest. Lah. I mean, that integrity plays a part, right? And I promise you, you won't be able to sleep at night. All right, okay. <laughs> what is this? Ah, yes. <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> very interesting. So as, a, as an educator, I was very impressed with NTU's stance on Chat GPT compared to the other <laughs> university. Um, because the other one in uh, Clementi, uh, started going crazy about ChatGPT and they were like, oh my god, I had such this reactive uh, um, kind of like reaction to it. They were like, oh my god, we have to stop this in this track. We have to develop like a secondary ChatGPT in order to find out about ChatGPT. And, and I was like, how deep does it go, right? How matter? So, uh, but NT was like, you know what? Our students are very smart. They're, we just need to lean into it, right? And that's what we've done. So if you want to use ChatGPT, you can, but cite that you are using ChatGPT. Be honest about it, right? Uh, ask if you're confused about whether or not you can use ChatGPT for that course or for the assignment, ask your professors. Honestly, I think all of us are quite easy to talk to. Super easy to talk to, actually, right? And we are like, honestly, like the, the coolest bunch here, right? The coolest psychology department, right? In Singapore, <laughs> right? And uh, for ChatGPT, I mean, you're just asking a machine to come up with ideas for you. You're all better than that, right? So come on, nothing beats your own ideas. Uh, a lot of the assignments are very, very fun, right? If you run it through ChatGPT, it's going to lose out on that, right? And I tell you, we've had a lot of experience with students. We can probably tell when your ideas are substandard and came from ChatGPT because it's very surface level, right? And you really want that, 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 that critical thinking, uh, and that comes from up here, right? Not typing it in even if you're an expert at writing good questions to chat GPT, right? So again, uphold your pledge to integrity and in learning. And it's very scary, you know, so my, my wife is a nurse and she's like, and she teaches nursing and she, and the school is like, oh my God, like, can you imagine nurses using chat GPT? And these people, like, you, your life is in their hands, you know, and they're like, how do I care for patients with lung cancer? That's not something that you want, right? So similar when you're doing your clinical psychology work and later on when you're, you know, uh, when you're doing your research, you don't want to rely on that, right? You want to be able to have the chops. You want to be able to, to prove that, hey, yeah, I am an expert, you know, in this field. This is what we are all working towards, right? Okay, so here are all of us. Uh, as you can see, we are a very good looking bunch. Uh, <laughs> so we have our head of program, Dr. Andy Ho. Uh, our first year academic advisor, Dr. Chulin. He's not here today, I think. Um, Darren's here, right? So Dr. Darren Rio, 
uh, who is going to be teaching you HP 1000. Uh, Dr. Tan Ching Hong is here as well in the back. Uh, Dr. Michael Gumet, I think he's, yeah, here he is. All right, wonderful. And uh, me as well, right? Your internship coordinator. I don't, that's my PhD. <laughs> okay, it just dropped out. <laughs> I ate the doctor. All right. So, yeah. So, we're all here for, for, for your support. And I think perhaps the most important person, someone give her a raise, uh, is our psychology manager, uh, <laughs> Ms. Ng Yan Chia. Yeah. So, if you have any questions about the program, about planning, about um, you know, handling the AUs and stuff like that, uh, going for internships, going for um, your overseas exchange, and you're not sure when to do it, or you want some really good objective advice, please do approach her as well. Right? So these are very important email addresses. Okay? All right. So that's about it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, please sign, uh, scan the QR code, and then um, you can ask through that. Right? Oh, no. Where is it? Oh, this is the link to the website. All right, okay, so that's the link to the website. So you can go do some FAQs, right? Uh, click on the FAQ page. All right, so that's all from me. 